If you're someone who likes to spend time in the sun, then stop what you're doing right now and listen up because I'm about to tell you about a very important topic, a skin cancer called melanoma. So turn your volume up high and listen closely so you don't miss anything I'm about to say. I'm Dr. Hannah Kopelman, a fellowship trained clinician in skin cancer. Today, I'm going to share with you what you need to know about melanoma, how to spot it early, if you're someone at increased risk for developing it, and what steps to take to best protect yourself. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Melanoma is a type of skin cancer that actually starts in cells called melanocytes. Melanocytes are responsible for producing the pigment called melanin, which is what gives our skin its color. Melanoma is less common than any other skin cancer. It is far less common than basal cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas. However, it is the most fatal because it's the most aggressive and it can spread and grow quickly. Melanomas are typically dark brown. They can also be black, bluish gray in color, and believe it or not, sometimes they can be pink. Melanomas can develop from a pre-existing mole. So if you look at your, my arm, I have a ton of moles on my arm. They're all normal, but it is possible that one of these moles eventually can evolve into something atypical or unlikely, but it can also develop into melanoma. But most of melanomas start spontaneously, so they don't come from pre-existing moles. But I just wanted to put that out there so you know that it is something that is possible. Now, you're probably getting to the point in this video where you're getting pretty nervous hearing about melanoma because it can be fatal and it can be a very aggressive cancer. But good news, early detection is key. And if you detect your melanoma early, it is very treatable. So as I said, early detection can save your life. And yes, early detection for all cancers can save your life. But today I'm just gonna put the spotlight on melanoma. And melanoma is a cancer that you can see. So it's visible to your eye. Melanoma does not discriminate. It can affect anyone regardless of age, gender, or skin color. For instance, there's a subtype of melanoma called acromelanoma. It's found on your palms, your soles, and your fingernails. Actually, Bob Marley died of this on his toenail. So it's predominantly found in darker skinned individuals who are either Asian or black. I want you to understand the risk factors to know if you're someone who's at increased risk for developing melanoma. First things first, personal history or family history of melanoma. That is key. Second, are you a light-skinned individual with either light hair, whether it be blonde or red, with light eyes like mine, blue, or even green? Um, this puts you at increased risk. If you're someone that has a lot of atypical moles, we're talking over 50. If you're someone who has a lot of freckles, if you have a history of really bad blistering sunburns, and I'm talking even when you were young, um, if you're someone who has an excessive and chronic exposure to sun, so if you grew up on a beach or spent a lot of time on a boat growing up, then you're definitely at an increased risk for skin cancer. If you're someone who has gone to the tanning beds, yes, I know indoor tanning salons used to be the cool thing to do before prom, not anymore. I honestly don't even know how these things are legal. But if, you're, if you've ever been to a tanning salon and you've just done even just one session before the age of 20, your risk of developing melanoma goes to 47%. That's crazy. So avoid tanning salons at all costs. If you're someone with a weakened immune system or taking medication that weakens your immune system, you can also be at increased risk. So for, some, for someone like who has a transplant, they always have increased risk of developing skin cancers. Um, of course, if you're someone who doesn't like sunscreen, you are definitely at increased risk. Kids, if you're at home listening to this, wear your sunscreen. Sunscreen is cool. Recent studies have shown a link between melanoma and breast cancer. My mom actually had breast cancer, so she's a survivor. 
and her risk of developing melanoma actually doubles compared to the general population, according to the new research. So she goes for annual full body skin exams, and I recommend you do the same. The last thing I want to emphasize is you can still develop melanoma even if you aren't a sun worshiper because genetics play a big role. Now you might be at home watching this and wondering if all these moles on your arms, your legs, your stomach, wherever they may be, if they are melanomas. I'm going to go through with you an at-home self-assessment you can do with the ABCDE method. It's very easy and we'll run through it together. But when in doubt, consult your dermatologist. A stands for asymmetry. So what that means is one side doesn't match the other side. Kind of like a black and white cookie. If you have a normal mole, or also known as a benign mole, they should be round, circular, and kind of like even throughout. It should One side will line up with the other side and they won't look different on both sides. B, border. If you have melanoma, usually the borders look irregular or scalloped. If in a normal mole, if you look at my arm, I have many moles that are just perfectly bordered. They don't start to go, it doesn't look like an artist went out of line. They're just perfectly circled or oval. So in a melanoma, the borders will be irregular or funky looking. C stands for color. So as I mentioned earlier, melanomas can be brown, dark brown, black, sometimes even gray blue, and pink. Look for the ugly duckling sign. What that means is look at your arm, look at your legs, look at your back, or have someone look at your back, and tell you if there's any mole that really sticks out and doesn't look like the rest of them. D stands for diameter, so the size. So typically we look for the size that it should be greater than six millimeters, but melanomas can also be smaller. So I'm not telling you to go around, and six millimeters, by the way, is the size of a pencil eraser. So I'm not telling you to go around and measure each mole on your arm. Don't go crazy here, but I'm just telling you the standard size we look for if we suspect it might be a melanoma. E stands for evolving. So melanomas or moles that are evolve and change. So if you notice that the size is increasing rapidly, the color is changing, something just seems unusual about it. If it starts to bleed, itch, or become painful, definitely go see your dermatologist. So now that I gave you an overview of what melanoma is and what to look out for, I want to go through best practices on how to keep your skin safe and how to protect it and ways to lower your risk for developing melanoma. While we know you can't control your genetics, and as I said, many melanomas can just come because of genetics, there are things you can do to protect your skin. First and foremost is wearing a daily sunscreen with SPF of at least 30 or more. Reapply that sunscreen at least every two hours, especially if you're someone who's going out and playing tennis or sweating and going swimming, you must reapply. In addition, try to avoid the sun during those peak hours of UV rays. So that's usually from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I know that seems like the whole day, but try to do things in the shade. Always use an umbrella if you're at the beach. Now there's even great options for sun protective clothing and they look trendy and cool. You can find t-shirts, long sleeves, pants, and even bathing suits. Look for a label that says that it has SPF protection. This is a great way to be cautious in the sun. Don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, avoid tanning salons at all cost. I recommend seeing your dermatologist for an annual skin exam and self-examination at home with the ABCDE method is key to early detection. Believe it or not, self-examination is the most important way to detect melanoma. And that's because nobody really knows your skin or your body better than yourself. And yes, you have those areas that are hard to see, like your back. So what I recommend is have someone snap a picture of your back, like twice a year, and that way you can compare it to see if there's any change or any mole that's getting darker or looking funky. And it's a really great way to self-check yourself. Now, if you're sitting at home and you are looking at your skin and see a funky mole that you are a little bit worried about, 
make an appointment to see your dermatologist, and what they'll do is they'll look you over from head to toe, and that's what a full body skin exam, and I'm going to go into how to prepare for a full body skin exam in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then if they see an or a mole that's funky or they agree with you about your assessment, then usually they'll numb the area up and they'll take a very small sampling of that mole or lesion and they'll send it to a pathologist who will study it under a microscope and look at the cells and they can determine if the cells are atypical and if they do in fact have skin cancer in it or melanoma. Um, if you find out that you do have melanoma, there are ways to treat it as I mentioned, especially if you're early in detection. So I'm gonna run through those treatment options with you now. So if you do find out you have melanoma, usually the treatment depends on the stage of melanoma. And now modern medicine is amazing and we have wonderful advancements. So there are more and more treatment options coming out. And if you find out that your melanoma is early on and superficial, then usually the only thing you need to do to treat it is with an excision. So you come into the office, you'll have a surgical excision, which is a surgical removal of that lesion, and usually you'll be good to go, and you'll follow up with your dermatologist for routine skin exams. However, if your melanoma is deeper and not localized to that one area, then you're going to have to go through a more extensive overview and um, deeper dive into find out if it's metastasized or also known as spread to other areas. So we look to see if the melanoma went to your lymph nodes or other organs in your body. And if that is the case, then you'll usually go for different scans and a workup. Um, if you find out that the melanoma has spread throughout your body, we now have great treatment options with chemotherapy agents and immunotherapies. So there are treatment options out there. Modern medicine, as I said, is making incredible advancements. If you or a loved one has recently been diagnosed with melanoma, there are some wonderful online resources that can offer you support. I hope after watching this video, you have a better understanding of melanoma, that you learned a lot, and feel empowered to take charge of your skin health. So remember, early detection is key, and staying informed can save lives. So keep an eye on your skin, practice sun safety, and don't forget, spread the word about sunscreen. If you have any further questions about melanoma, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video.